video. Okay, the video probably <laughs> should be starting or going. What's with both of you guys? You both have a cough tonight? What is this? I think we're laughing. Huh? <laughs> I think we're laughing. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me see here. Oh, Bob Eberth. We haven't heard from Bob in a while. Hi, Bob. How are you this evening? Oh, and, not too bad. I've just been yeah. buried for the past few weeks. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Patrick's with us and Rob's with us. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Patrick. Can you see me? Yeah. How you feeling tonight? Well, I just want to <laughs> fucking say yeah. that I'm fucking sorry I fucking offended any motherfucker by fucking saying fuck all the fucking time. Yeah. Because I'm fucking not always fucking that fucking way. Because <laughs> I do have other fucking words that I interject yeah. inner fucking mittenly every once in a motherfucking while. Yeah. So if I fucking offend any motherfuckers out there, please accept my fucking apology. Thank you. I'm fucking, fucking glad you back. Yeah, what? I, th I think that may be the most times we've heard that sentence uh, uttered, that word uttered in a in a sentence in I think my life. To be honest with you, what happened to what happened to uh, uh, Jim? Oh, here, Boomtown Rat. Who is Boomtown Rat? Are you there, Boomtown Rat? I'm talk. here. This is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How are you this evening? Have you ever called the show before, Jeff? Oh yeah, I was uh, Lafayette Jeff. I'm on a different pro, uh, different username. Oh, I see. Okay, can you give us some video? Oh, there you go. Some video of yourself. Isn't that nice? And uh, we've got. Uh, okay, so so far right now we got uh, we got uh, Jeff. I of course I remember you, Jeff. Now that I see your face, uh, Patrick, I remember you because I see your face. Uh, Rob, how are you? The voice of Gabnet. Great. How are you? Uh, Bob Eberth, who's out there in uh, your Salt Lake City, right? Yeah. Uh, Jim Browning, who is Revelstoke Jim, who does his show from the Great White. Wait a minute. You're alive? Yes, I'm alive. Uh, we'll explain that in a moment. Uh, then there's uh, Josh Wheeler, and there's Mark Thorner. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more person, and we'll have a full house here. Hello. Anyway, Patrick, I'm what so what the fuck did you want to say? I want to say one thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a back and forth where... Josh and I weren't sure which of us it was. <laughs> so, I mean, you think it's me, but it might not be. And we just me. would like that person to call in or to specify yeah. on the thread, is it Josh it or is well, it yeah, me? Yeah, that, uh, that was the whole thing that uh, he should call in because he was, he was saying, you know, we have we, we are like, well, like I said, I don't want to recreate my... Uh, my uh, the thing I wrote, but you know we we're different than a caller in a talk show. Sort of, we're kind of like co-hosts of this big show. So when you call in, you have the opportunity to change, kind of change and alter the show in a good way, like uh, most of us, or in a bad way, like say Doug. You know, if I, I it, mean, it, you uh, know, if I if have the right, power right now, <laughs> right now I have a group of, of really good people, except for whoever's moving his microphone a lot. Uh, Jeff, you got to stop that. It's making noise. I wanted you to see me head on. Oh, okay. He's got a, he'll, he'll learn the rules. That's yeah. okay. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to say is everybody here is, is perfectly wonderful and acceptable, you know, and no Doug, which there won't be. I mean, you really got frustrated last night at that, didn't you, Patrick? Well, yeah, but I mean, it it, it it was what it was. I mean, it was a couple times this week with different topics, and it wasn't just Doug as you mentioned, and it's fine. I just needed a break, and I took it. So yeah, well, yeah. But, but but still, that was that was part of it. Am I right? Well, yeah. I mean, it it was the. Uh, the strong it was the interjecting of something that had nothing to do with something else that I just, uh, my my head could not handle anymore. Yeah. Because I didn't know where we were going. And I don't mind going off a cliff, but I like Segway. Yeah. So. <laughs> and while you're going off that cliff, you want to be able to say, oh, fuck. Fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. I, couldn't... I, I, I did, are we, do you have the live stream on? Yeah, I have the live stream on now. And this is, this is for Josh. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow he's going to do something very nice for me. Yeah. It's my lightsaber. Uh, yeah. All right. 
Did oh, you... do something nice for me too, Josh. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody's got light lightsabers tonight. Uh, everybody, I don't have a lightsaber. Do you both own the same? Light? I've got one, but I can't show you guys. It would be X-rated. Uh, 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 <laughs> I see. I see. Somewhere the penis remark has to come into play. Uh, I, I do want Oscar to settle this, though. We have a. We have a running wager going on whether or not the fuck guy is me or Patrick. So we need to I have this. I think it's Patrick. Settled. I hate to say it, but I, I, I don't. Patrick. I don't. I think it's Patrick. Yeah. But Man, I, I'm cool with that. Well, yeah. I'm taking my game to a whole fucking new level. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we want to yeah. see. We don't want to see want, you lag behind, uh, Josh. I want Rob to create a whole new promo around <laughs> that little rant <laughs> of Patrick's. We may have to do that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or we all have to turn up our game so much that Patrick saying fuck is just so minimal. Then all of us are just saying fuck all the time. Fuck this, fuck that. Well, fuck this, is, this is certainly the show I'm going to try and sell to Clear Channel. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, using this as my, I'm using this as my fucking audition tape. God damn right. They're going, well, the show I, sounded I, good, <laughs> except we don't have a delay that's capable of, of handling you without blowing up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck Clear Channel. You can start the demo tape with that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love it in Peoria. They'll love it in Peoria, <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, man, oh, man. So did you hear what I was reading about my friend Rob Schneider? That's sad. It is sad, isn't it? But do you think he could have been screwing around with this uh, guy in Philly? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, you know something. I don't think so because I think in the last uh, couple of months I've seen an item or two about him making That's... exactly these kind of comments. Oh, so he is making for people a, a who are, are watching the TV uh, program version of this and didn't hear the the audio version of it. Uh, I read a thing about my, about my friend Rob Schneider in which he made some what we could call them right wing comments about the president and this is turning into a fascist nation. And, uh, you know, I guess I could take this from some political comic, right? But, you know, I mean, I've known Rob for many, many years, and a political pundit, he is not. Right. <laughs> so why does this happen? Why is it, you know, like, I like this guy, too. He's like a friend of mine, and I really like him. And I, I, I was thinking of maybe calling him and saying, do you want to come on and be with our citizens panel so we can tell you you're full of shit? Yeah. We'll yeah. Him out. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Jeff. Yeah, um, I love Rob Schneider. I think he's funny as hell. And he's probably just a, like everyone else, a squirrel fi trying to find a nut. And if he's on, on radio and he thinks he's going to get a response by being acting right wing, whatever, go for it. But I think deep down we all know him if you followed his career. And the guy's hilarious. Get him on here. That'd be great. Uh, I think I, I think he's a very talented guy, but I think he's also been given a short shrift. I mean, whenever I see a uh, family guy just loves to savage him, you know, and everybody likes to make jokes about how bad a comedian Rob Schneider is. And Rob is pretty damn good, actually. He's oh, a good he's, he's great. He's I a, mean, even the, the bad movies that they – that always get criticized from him. I like him just because I like him. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he, and, but he, he's also an, he's an okay and decent guy. But, you know, his career has had a rough time of it. I was talking to him when he was working. Remember he did a series about a year ago on CBS? You know? Yeah, that yeah. That was, that was and, pretty and, good and wasn't a bad. It wasn't a bad show. I mean, the sitcoms go if you like sitcoms and you like laugh tracks mm. and you like all of that. But the fact of the matter was that he was uh, 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 um, he, he, CBS was really screwing him like crazy on it. They were paying him next to nothing to do it, right? And he still had to go and do comedy gigs in order to pay the bills while mm. doing a sitcom. And that's the way it usually goes during the first year or so that you're on a sitcom. If it's not, if mm. it's it, you know it hasn't hit yet or they're waiting to see if it'll hit, they pay you crap. You're was practically it, working for slave wages. And then all Rob's of a show? Huh? Or was he, was he supporting cast, or was he the... No, uh, he was, the show was named it, Rob. It was called that? Rob, yeah. Wow. And, and, and I was not getting paid bupkis? And wow. I was talking to his brother, and he said, you know, he, Monday, he, he, this was on a Friday, he says, Monday, 
he has to be back in in Burbank or wherever to film the show or to work on the show, do the table read on the show. And over the weekend, he's going to Dubai to do comedy because we need to pay the bills. Dubai. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, Gosh. Dubai will pay the bills. Dubai will pay the bills. There's no question. Uh, wave Dubai bye. Uh, <laughs> did I just say that? I guess I did. I guess yeah. I did. But I just, but this seems to happen with a lot of times with people. I mean, uh, how, many, how many of you out there have had somebody you really liked and all of a sudden you, uh, you heard that this son of a bitch was like uh, uh, out uh, being a, a pathetic right winger? Well, that's kind of how I felt about Dennis Miller because, you know, when he was on SNL in Weekend Update, I thought that was amazing. He didn't and write I think that, he's. Right? What? I, he didn't I write no that, idea. did he? I don't know that he wrote that. I think he was one of the writers. You know, he had input on it. But uh, um, um, usually, um, uh, you know, that that show is written by committee. So yeah. um, right now, for instance, Seth Meyers left the show. And if you notice, the the update segment sucks. Oh, my Big God. Big time. Yes. But part of the reason is Seth Meyers was one of the head writers on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so when you lose a head writer, if he's got a certain sensibility, and uh, you know, I, I, all I got to say is it's terrible. But you know what's even worse? Have you seen his monologues on the late night show? Well, he's just doing his newscast, isn't he? He's trying yeah. to as a stand-up. And what I would have done if I were producing that show is I would say, first thing, you come out, you wave at everybody when you come through the curtains, and you go sit down at the desk, and then you do your monologue. Because that's where they're used to seeing you do a monologue is sitting at a desk. That's a risk for a talk show, though. Nobody wants to do that. That's taking a risk. Heaven forbid. Oh, you know. oh God! Yeah, heaven forbid yeah. we should do something like that. Different. Yeah. Even though it's twelve thirty night, nobody's watching anyway. But still, they can't afford to do the risk. Uh, well, there are some people watching. Yeah. Although I'll tell I you, I think they want to be groomed for the eleven thirty <clears throat> spot, so they don't want to right. be too different. Yeah. So that's probably why they're trying to keep it in the same vein. Because well, the you goal know, is to move up. The question is how many people are watching television that time of night anyway? You know, I mean, with what with DVRs and, and uh, all these shows now, I, I, I was told this by somebody who's working one of those late shows, that they're now, uh, the, the, their way of running those late shows is they do three-minute segments. In other words, they do bits. One right after the other. And even if they do an interview, it's a short interview. Why? Where's it going to wind up? YouTube. They're going to put it on YouTube the next day. Now, why do they put it on YouTube? Why would they care more about blowing it out on YouTube? Well, the answer is that when they put something on YouTube and it gets past, I think it's something like 10,000 views or something like that, YouTube starts paying the people who give it to them. So if Jimmy Kimmel, for instance, can get a million uh, YouTube views for something, that's going to mean some money to the network. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to become a money factor that these shows aren't being produced for you to sit there. What, what was that noise? Uh, that, was, that was Jeff. Uh, I have to go enjoy the night. I'm going to be uh, preoccupied. Thank you, and I'll be listening I'll let leave room for others. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Nice to thank meet you. you. Okay, bye bye. He was a little on the noisy side, wasn't he? Okay, it, can, <laughs> yeah. it gives us two place for. Uh, let's see here, two people at the table. If anybody wants to call us, um, uh, where was I? I was, uh, so I was I was talking about uh, YouTube. Yeah, the the these shows are being done for YouTube now. They're not being done for you, the audience. So uh, I mean, and, and, and I, even even Kimmel, who I like, who comes the closest to doing what I consider a legitimate uh, late night show, uh, even his stuff is all stuff they can chop up and then put online, and then it goes out, and if it gets a million views, hey, more money in the pocket of the network, more money in the pocket of Jimmy Kimmel, and so that's what they're who they're doing the shows for. They're not doing the shows for you and me anymore. Business has changed. Mm. Oh, yeah. big uh, Alex, did you, I think we might have discussed this to how when DirecTV, I think their contract is up for the NFL. One of the rumors is that Google might go in 
and get the NFL contract. <clears throat> wow. Tell about, I mean, <laughs> they, have, they have the money for it. Who where did I who did I see was trying to buy direct TV? Um yeah. But it wasn't Google. It was somebody else. AT and T. AT and T. Very good. Thank you, uh, Josh. AT and T is thinking of buying, uh, trying to buy a net, uh, uh, Direct TV, and I'm just I didn't know it was for sale. You know, I didn't. <laughs> Everything's know. for sale for the right price. Well, I mean, John Malone is a guy who likes acquiring, but doesn't like giving up particularly. You know. <laughs> Uh, and it looks like he's going to be, you know, he may, they, they, they may, this deal might go through. I thought DirecTV was owned by Verizon. DirecTV is owned by John Malone and Liberty, they, who also because, own something else I know, Sirius XM. Right. Well, yeah. the reason why I say that is because I was a DirecTV customer mm -hmm. and is also a Verizon Fios internet customer. Mm -hmm. And they, what yes. I was told was that you can get the billing on one bill. Because yeah. there's some, some there's a part ownership okay. there between Verizon he, 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 and no, there TV. wasn't a there wasn't a part ownership. Here's what happened: they, the FiOS has been a very phony operation for my money. Because I I went looking and I wanted to see could I get FiOS here at my apartment? Because really I would love the fiber and it's good for your uh, your regularity. So I. I <laughs> You know, I wanted the fiber, <laughs> and um, um, I, call, I I looked them up, and they said, yes, it's available in your building. So I went, wow, I didn't know that. <clears throat> so And then I, they, I put in my apartment numbers. It's available for your apartment. So I call them, and they go, yeah, uh, we can put Fios in there, but it's uh, you got to have a satellite dish. I said, what? I thought it was fiber. He said, well, no, we don't have fiber in your building. What we do is we put in a satellite dish, a direct TV satellite dish, and that's how you get your cable. And then we put an internet line, and that's how you get your internet. And I said, then that isn't Fios. Yeah. It was like faux Fios. Man. You know, it wasn't the real deal. Sure, it wasn't <clears throat> Fios internet because uh, that, like, that's what I had when I had direct TV was direct tv satellite dish on the roof but i had fios cable i mean fios internet in the house well you couldn't have anything but uh some kind of other service beside uh uh direct tv to take care of your internet because uh the satellite dishes don't have an uplink right satellite dishes only downlink right uh and so for that reason if they're going to hand you a full package they have to say well we're giving you our internet right uh, but they're not giving you the fiber internet. But then we'll oh. give you the uh, we'll give you the dish, and that will take care of your cable. Uh, and and that's what they were going to offer me. And I said, you know, come on, I got uh, I got Time Warner Signature. I'm paying an arm and a leg for it. It's like 325 bucks a month, but I've got like 110 <laughs> megabyte per second pipe uh, for my internet, and I've got uh, uh, six uh, TV sets being serviced by two DVRs in this house. And so I'm, you know, I've got everything I need. And, and Fios just couldn't even come close, you know. But they were trying to sell me Fios like it was the, it was the fiber deal that I was going to get, you know. Uh, we're joined by Phil Meyer, by the way, who just joined our little, uh, our little company this morning. So that means we have one more person, one more space. Well, Miranda's got to call and show us her apartment, doesn't she? Oh, she's, she's not going. She's on the road. She's on oh. the road oh. right now. Oh, so she oh, can't okay. show us her apartment tonight. Yeah, no. She's on the road. She said one of these week. Why yeah, is it I'm the yeah. last one to find out about all these things? <laughs> uh, Patrick goes, yeah, she's on the road. Oh, well, it's fine, you know. Well, she and I are, are you know, we have that kinship of Star Wars. Now, speaking of that, speaking of that, we'll get back to the Fios crap. doesn't really matter <laughs> anymore. Star Wars, there we go. Did, oh. you, did you see Big Bang Theory last night? Yeah. Uh, I, I DVR'd it. I didn't see it. Oh, yet. I, I know it's supposed to be good. So. Well, it's the, it's the Star Wars episode. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're made the of fourth fourth be with you. Yeah. 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 yeah because it's uh, they're going to celebrate Star Wars Day, which is May fourth, and she says, "Why, why May fourth? And they said, "May the fourth be with you." <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, he, then they look at her and go. You don't get it. She says, oh, I get it. That's why I have the face. Yeah. So, <laughs> this, this face isn't because I don't get it. Yeah, this face isn't because I don't get it. Yeah. But it's just my, a very... My 
favorite line last night was the Admiral Akbar snack bar. Oh, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 supposedly they had uh, the help of, uh, in <clears throat> fact, they had a credit at the end for LucasArts, uh, Lucasfilm. Uh, an industrial light and magic because they had to do some special effects to make Bob yes. Newhart look like Obi Wan Kenobi yeah. after he was dead, uh, and it it was really it was a it, I would have thought you would have just been so on that like fly on shit. Well, yeah, but at, I mean I I had uh, work I was actually doing, so I I was gonna watch it after uh, Jim's show tonight, or maybe I'm watching him play a Jim's show. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Which brings me around to an interesting question. You guys all watch TV, don't you? Even you, yeah. Josh. Although it's most of it's baseball, right? Yeah. But you watch TV. I, it, it, I, I, every now and then there's a show that I start watching that I want it to be good. And then it just never goes anywhere. You know? It's got everything going for it, and I want it to. I want to be able to support it, and eventually, I just have to give up the ghost and say, I don't yeah. think I'm watching this anymore. It's funny now, you mentioned that, and Rob Schneider. That's how I felt about that Rob show. I really looked forward to it, but it just really it was decent, but it just didn't get anywhere for me, and it didn't last long, and you know, yeah. didn't miss it. Why so. should I spend an hour with this, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll give you a good example of a show that I wanted to be good. I wanted Revolution to be good, right? And I gave it a year. I even gave it a couple of episodes into the next year. Man, that show's going nowhere. Just nowhere. It's just like a dog chasing his tail, and it, it, is, it doesn't know where to go. Um, so that's a good example of, of that kind of show. And there are several others, you know, that I just I get into one or two episodes and then I just can't get with it anymore. And I really try. Anybody have a disappointing show like that? You you got to have one. Oh, uh, 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 Phil says he's got one. Well, it wasn't really disappointing. Uh, I, I tuned into Netflix and I w binge watched uh, the first season of o Orange is the New Black. Oh, I like that show. Oh, I yeah. liked it very much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I had my hand up before you said no, something but, but disappointing. What, no, but oh, but oh, I see. Okay, because uh, it, you know, I mean, that that show, on the other hand, was a complete surprise. Oh, I, I you very, know, it, I, I'm it, looking forward to June sixth. It came out of nowhere, and then we started watching it, and uh, it, it, you know, uh, after a while, it it really just became a terrific show. Um, well, the, uh, fact, yeah, the I, first I, I, season's I, on Netflix, and I binge-watched it in a yeah. day and a quarter, and it yeah. was great. In fact, I actually liked the show better than, than uh, House of Cards, to be honest really? with you. I, I be, and I guess because it surprised me, you know. Uh, let me see, uh, Mr., uh, the other Mr. Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, talk about Netflix. One of those shows that, to me, and I don't know if you ever saw it, was um, that to me what I thought was going to be good. I know what you're going to talk about. Really, just didn't go anywhere. Did you ever watch Hemlock Grove? Yes, on Netflix? I tried three episodes, yeah. and I just Same it was here. like it was like uh, when I got to the fourth episode, I went, "Do I really want to waste the hour with yeah, this thing? Exactly. Do I really like, want to?" Because yeah. the first episode, I remember, like, the first episode, I was like, okay, this is going somewhere, you know. It's interesting, but then it's just like, oh, it's just more of the same bullshit. <laughs> so. And I'll tell you one I stuck with for a while, that I've stuck with for a while, and every week I watch it, I go, why am I still watching this? <laughs> Anybody seen Da Vinci Demons? Yeah. I've heard of it. <laughs> it's over there on Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, That's and, and again, uh, this is a show they spent a lot of money on it. Uh, Julie Gardner, who was one of the people behind the uh, the recent resurgence of Doctor Who, uh, is is one of the producers on it. Uh, it it it's, uh, uh, what's his name? The guy who did the Batman wrote the Batman movies for Christopher Nolan uh, is the creator and writer on this show, and it's it you just want it to be good, but it never gets good. <clears throat> it just sits there and languishes. And does nothing. Um, anybody what else? Do you think of, what do you think of Californication? 
It's about uh, on, it, on it, Showtime. It's about uh, it, it's about three years past its expiration date. Think so? Yeah. 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 I, I've, I've been enjoying it. Yeah, but I mean, it just you know it. Uh, so uh, what set of tits are we going to see this week? You know, it's basically <laughs> the premise of the show. Uh, shows like yeah. that you know i liked it during its first i you know what i loved about that show i loved the first season and i loved the way it ended where at the end he and the wife and the kids say fuck california we're getting in the car and we're leaving and if they had said we're not going to do another season that would have been the perfect ending but no they got to come back and somehow the family's got to fall apart again because they got a renewal for season two and and <clears throat> then again it becomes like a dog chasing its tail uh, yes. Speaking uh, of Dan, what, what we're gonna say? Uh, no, I'll let somebody no, at the no, Rob, Rob, go ahead. Rob, let's. Uh, you, 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 you. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Because my I was thing gonna say. Is... Speaking of comebacks, yeah. is anybody uh, a fan of Twenty Four? Because Monday night, Jack is back. Um, Jack is back. Let again, me guess, there's again, a, a show. A he's show. gonna have to disarm it before it blows up and kills the no. world. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's he's got he's got to prevent the assassination of a U.S. president on foreign soil because if he doesn't, it could start a world war. And you know something, <laughs> twenty four is only twelve this time. Is yeah. that right? Well, it it's yeah. twelve. It's twelve episodes. <laughs> it's in England, so and I guess it's two time. hours per episode now. <laughs> so uh, time will be, it'll be in double speed he, time. Here's the thing that I I'll tell you what I got to hate about twenty four. Uh, is that it just kept going, you know, <laughs> that it just kept yeah. going. The first year, yeah. terrific. Wow, what a great cast. Oh, the whole amazing. the whole concept was terrific. But you know something that's very interesting about that show is you would think you got a show, it's called 24, right? And it's got to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's all got to take place within 24 hours, all right? How this guy stays awake that long and has that much energy is beyond me. And when's he going? And, and by the way, I've got to also say a lot of wounds heal very fast in that world. But anyway, uh, I, 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 uh, you know, I watched the program. And I, I really liked it. And then the, the it, then I found out something about the show. You would have thought that they knew how it was going to end when they started it, right? They never did, yeah. because oh, what they not. did is they didn't know if they get a full season pickup. So they just wrote to the halfway point. And if you go to the halfway point of that first year, you'll see that it comes to a conclusion of sorts until they got the pickup, and then they just kept going. But the, they, uh, on all those seasons, didn't have the last episode written when they started the first one. <laughs> Every know. season? Yeah. Wow. Are you going to watch right half this point, uh, 12 point, hours? Just... Are you going to watch this 12 hours? I will start watching it. Yeah. You know, and if it's good, I suppose I will continue to watch it. You know, I, well, luckily a lot of things are going off now, but I have far too much on my plate. I watch Arrow every week. How, anybody here watch Arrow? Come on, Patrick, you're a sci fi guy. You should love, and comic book guy, you should love Arrow. I, I'm very, I, I'm an MCIS guy. Um, I, you know, I, that, that's kind of my, my deal. I'm not really into this <clears throat> comic book. Um, I did like being human when that was on. Yeah. Um, I, I watched that. You know, everybody used to give me a bad time because they went, oh, you watch the American version, the British version so much better. I could never get into the British version of that show. I watched the American version only. My, my ex-girlfriend got me involved in that when it started a couple years ago. Yeah. And then I just stayed with her because I, I liked the show. So what a great plot. Yeah, you I know, like I mean, the second I, season on. I like the first season a lot. I, I lost it in the second season. You know something though, they ended it up pretty well. Yes, they did a good job of ending it, and the one in England still hasn't ended. The one in England's still going. They're in about their fifth or sixth season, I think. Uh, but uh, and everybody used to tell me, oh, but you got to watch the British version, and I did watch the British version, but it wasn't that good. Let's you see. Think who, it's your comparison. Who, who who is this? This is somebody that we have never. Amorose. Uh, Armand. 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 How's this pronounced? How's your name pronounced, Armand? It's 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 Aaron. Oh, it's Aaron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have a video at all, or do you? Just... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this from a tablet, and oh, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, 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 you, oh, you can't yeah, do that. There. And Tony is calling one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, We're nine, ten. We got a full house, Tony. 
Tony, sorry to say we got a full house. I, I don't want to hang up on you because I love Tony, too. But anyway, uh, Aaron, where are you calling from, Aaron? I'm, I'm in South Florida, guys. Uh, I was trying to do this from my laptop, but it appears my camera's busted, and well, I don't know if I can no, get the no, video working. No, here, the here's, the, here's the problem you've got. If you try to do a group call video on an iPad, uh, it won't let you. Skype won't let you. Well, I'm on, I'm on Android here. I don't, it's probably the same. I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's the mobile version just won't let you. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's probably the case. Well, let's just hope and pray like Google Groups and uh, all the other and FaceTime and stuff. Let people all use their video on their tablets, and then uh, Skype will have to do it. Because last week they started giving away the group calls for free. Because, oh, that's good. Yeah. So what do you do down in Florida? Well, you know, I'm an, uh, I'm an account manager at a company that uh, that sells like a promotional USB drives. Yeah. And I freelance as a graphic designer on the side on occasion. Not too often now, but sometimes. Now, what do you mean promotional USB drives? What is You know, the flash drives that you plug into the computer. We, uh, we put branding on them. Yeah. Uh, you know, logos and such. We make them in custom shapes and things like that. I see. Okay. Yeah. And 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 how does that go for you? It's it goes, you know. It's it's a good yeah. job. Yeah, work with good people. It's a nice, relaxed startup atmosphere. Boy, flash drives are just, you know. I mean, they're everything now. Yeah, yeah. it's really. I mean, I'm I'm surprised to be honest at how successful we we do. We we do very well. I think. Well, well, you you do basically. Hey, Tony, if you're listening, Tony, I'm sorry, I can't pick you up because you're you would make everybody not be video anymore okay and this is the i on any other night i might try putting him on and letting everybody freeze for a couple of minutes but tonight we're doing the tv thing and uh that would not be kind to the tv people Tony's um, cool he'll understand <laughs> yeah but but uh uh it, it but you know what really got me is the other day when my wife was looking for a new portable computer right so we're thinking of MacBook Air, right? And she's looking at the MacBook Air, and we're going, well, how big a drive you want to get in it? You can't get a drive in a MacBook Air anymore. Right. It's all flash. It's all flash drive. Yep. Who's making that noise? Is that you, Aaron? Yeah, that's my AC just kicked on. I'm, uh, I'm going to turn it off. Give me one second. Uh, your, your what? Turn, what do you say turned on? AC. Oh, AC. Oh, okay. I just, it sounded like somebody rubbing something against something. No, oh, goodness. But I didn't like, I, I didn't oh, like, so that kind of show. I didn't like yeah. the idea that you. What kind of we doing here? I didn't like the fact that you couldn't get a hard drive, you know? That, oh, that, this flash is so much faster. Yeah, I know that, I, and that's wonderful, but also sometimes you want storage too, but I guess what you do is you just, you know, put a, uh, a two gigabyte uh, passport on the USB and and uh, put all your stuff on there, you know. Or network storage. Or network storage. Yeah, that's another uh, uh, another way of doing it. But uh, maybe I'm just old fashioned and I and I want a hard drive. You know. Well, that's one of the things we talk about with our customers a lot. Actually, is we do a lot of business with independent photographers and things like that who are making the transition from CDs to USBs. Yeah. Uh, a lot of their clients nowadays, they don't have CD drives on these MacBook Airs and Ultrabooks and, mm -hmm. you know, iPads in general and stuff. You can plug, you know, with a, with an adapter, you can plug a USB drive into an iPad, but you can't ever put a CD in one. So. Right. Listen, you must get a lot of business from uh, the conventions and stuff because that's – I was at the uh, VMware convention last August, and I – walked away with a ton of usb drives all with logos and stuff for different that's like the big giveaway well who who had the most memory <laughs> <laughs> i mean what were they like two gigabytes and then uh, two megabytes? yeah they're like two gig whatever you did they hand them out at all the different booths on the floor everybody's got their promotional uh, 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 by deal. the way all speaking of, but speaking of those old promotional things uh uh where, where's uh where's where, where oh there's there's uh what did, what did you just do? Did you change your name? <laughs> Look at the name. If you can see it on TV, that Jim Browning put up there. You know, you can put up any name you want to, right? Yeah. You are now Oscar Meyer. 
Well, we had Dan Meyer and Phil Meyer. <laughs> Dan, Meyer. It's an all Meyer evening. Why not? Everybody changed name to Meyer. Oh. You know, That's just true. like last night, this show is getting mired down. Uh, yeah. oh. Muck and Meyer. Oh. 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 I have another story I want to bring up to you guys. See what you think about it. Uh, and, and, and in a way, I was thinking, oh, this guy's just being reactionary and, you know, whatever. And then I thought about it, and I said, you know, this is worth talking about. Casino mogul Steve Wynn has fired back at George Clooney. Have you heard about this story? Yeah. After the Hollywood star reportedly called Wynn an asshole and then stormed off in a huff. Why didn't he leave in a minute and a huff? Uh, <laughs> during a Las Vegas dinner. Uh, this is from Page Six. They say they previously reported that Clooney and Wynn got into an argument over politics at a glitzy Las Vegas dinner. A dinner, during which Wynn was pushing liberal Clooney's political buttons and ultimately called President Obama an asshole. Clooney then called Wynn the same and stormed off. Wynn has addressed the spat in an interview with Stephanie Rubel of Bloomberg TV, denying that he ever insulted Obama and saying Hollywood celebrities, now this is the part I found interesting and that you might want to talk about, live in a very strange bubble of their own. They're money coddled. They're highly privileged, Wynn said, uh, stars like Clooney. We're talking about successful artists like George and Barbara Streisand. They live in a relatively small world, and the people around them are solicitous and caring of them. He added, they have a worldview that is therefore everything should be given to everybody because everything has been given to them. Did Wim uh, count the meal? Eating the three hundred dollars steak. <laughs> this, this from the billionaire. Well, wait a minute. Wynn said that as a billionaire businessman, he has a broader perspective than Clooney. You have to protect women. You have to protect the enterprise in order to take care of the employees. So therefore, you can't be wasteful. You can't squander things or jeopardize people. Wynn said. Running a business gives you a sense of compassion that is divine, defined in different terms than someone who just thinks of themselves as generous. <laughs> Does any of this, is any of this uh, hitting home at all? I mean, anybody dis necessarily finding fault with him? No, many employers, many employers think that uh, the, the families that are benefiting from the business that they put together uh, yeah. And it makes them feel good. I remember my father felt that way. I even feel that way. You know, that there's, there's you know, 10, 12 families that are uh, making a living because do of you, the endeavors do you, do that you I created. Feel, do you feel responsible for those people? Yes, every two weeks when I have to make payroll. Well, I mean, but, <laughs> but I mean, if, for, for instance, uh, um, I, don't know, I don't know if I'm telling stories out of school. There, there's a late night talk show host who had stayed on probably many years longer than he wanted to stay on. But he stayed on because he didn't want to put all his people out of work. Uh, and I wonder, you know, I mean, it, how off base is Wynn here when he says, you know, Clooney can afford to be this, this generous person because really he doesn't have to pay the price of, of, of keeping a business going. As but he does example. have a business. He has a production yeah. company. Exactly. He runs with a couple of people. Yeah. He's got to make a payroll. Yeah. You know, he's it, got his agents and managers. It, 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 you know, he's got his own charity organizations. He's got that organization that he does with it, uh, it, with Nor with Ed Norton. Yeah. How much but, of it do you think he does, as opposed to like Phil, who makes his payroll every two weeks? And or you know, he's how involved in all that do you think he is? It does. You know, I don't know. I. It's just that, you know, when you're an actor, you're you are technically a subcontractor, so mm. you're collecting a bunch of 1099s. He's making six, seven figures per minimum per picture. You become your own business. You become your own brand. Six figures per no. Well, I'm saying, you know, I'm just saying seven figures. Well, however. It's more than we, any of us make together right now. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I, I bet you know, he got right. He's a company. You know, he's aware yeah, but, where but, his money's but, going. Well, wait a minute, Patrick. Uh, let's hear from the Republican here. Maybe he has a take on this. Well, I, I mean, I Mark touched on it with you. Your own brand. I mean, it's kind of like what did Lloyd's of London do? 
they insure body parts, they insure hands, they insure feet for models, they insure faces for modeling. I mean, you're your own brand, and it's uh, and your it's up to you. It's your responsibility to yeah. maintain your body a certain way, to maintain your feet, to maintain your teeth, whatever it is. And if your on-screen deal is your face, mm -hmm. and that's what draws people, it your responsibility to take care of that. So in a sense, you are your own business, and you need to be aware of, of those things. And no, it's not, I mean, in the case of Clooney, I, I didn't know all the company he's involved in, but we could just take, you know, a, a generic person coming up, uh, a, a model or a uh, actor who is a nobody, yeah. but they've got a certain flair and they're told in advance, look, you're gonna go somewhere, Lloyds of London, ensure your hands, ensure your feet, whatever, and you need to maintain that, otherwise you're gonna be out of work. And but this that's is bread and butter. This, Pat, this is looking in instead of looking out. When, uh, when you were talking about Clooney worried about his own facial features, uh, what, uh, that's his product, and he's not responsible, really, for anyone else. All the other people that are around him are there to support him. He's not necessarily there to support them. Uh, uh, you know, I, well, you know, th there's a stretch right there because well, uh, well, even what, in my what, business, what, yeah. I support them, they support me. Well, what about this thing that he, that he said there, that running a business gives you a sense of compassion that is defined in a different term than someone who just thinks of themselves as generous. Well, he's he's coming from the point that you know because we hear a lot about these celebrities and you kind of get tired of them talking about stuff like maybe they want to stand up for things like the rainforest and everything sometimes and Hollywood celebrities. I understand that, but at the same time. You know, he uh, George Clooney, like like for his face and for everything else, he's got his makeup people. He's got his agents. He's got, you know, he's got a big, a lot of people that he is supporting through his uh, his need to be to look good and to be you know represented and everything. Yeah, but 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 I I don't know if that's exactly the point that Wynn was trying to make. That, you know, that he just felt that, hey, you know, uh, a guy like Clooney can be generous and, and act generous because he doesn't really have the same responsibilities. It, it's, it's, just well, an it interesting, it's just an interesting comment that he came out with. Patrick? Uh, Jim had his hand up first. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let me uh, go find Jim. See, and when we do the TV thing, I have to keep bringing people up so that everybody can see them. Jim? Well, I just, wait, wait, I mean, wait, like I said, wait, wait. I, I find, yeah. I saw this article earlier today, too, and I was I was going to make mention of it. Um, but when, again, he's talking about running this business, I mean, how many people who work for him consider him this benevolent employer? I mean, he can be a jerk to his employees just as easily. I mean, we're talking about, uh, they're to support him, and he's to support them. Yeah. Uh, but I think anybody who works with somebody, I mean, if if it's if it's a personality who has uh, a business manager or an, an an agent and stuff like that, it's not just all one sided. Obviously, it is to support the career of of the individual. But like mm -hmm. I said, I think Win is is talking out of his butt here coming across as as oh i'm i'm with the people i'm i'm i understand business more and and i i can speak out more rather than some coddled celebrity i'm sure mr win is equally coddled in his life oh there's no question about it there's yeah. nobody there's nobody in the win organization that says going to go up to and say steve on that thing you're full of shit you know exactly. uh, uh and, and quite frankly if i had a business like Steve Wynn or like George Clooney, and there weren't people there that were willing to tell me when I'm full of shit, I think I would fire them. It's kind of like the thing I've been yelling about lately about people not taking chances in the business because they're afraid if they take a chance and they fail, they'll get fired. 
And if I ran a company, you'd get fired if you didn't take a chance. You know, I would yep. rather you take a chance and fail than to t not take a chance at all because innovation doesn't come out of just uh, sticking, sitting around with your finger up your ass. Speaking of that, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, and I don't have it in my ass. But, yeah. um, what about, like, Oprah Winfrey? I mean, they're, they're, the, they're the woman who is a celebrity among celebrities. She's a philanthropist. She's, um, she owns, you know, her Harpo thing. She's now involved with Starbucks, where she has her own tea line and all of these other things. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, when you're getting into her, she may not be the actress, per se, that Clooney is. But you, you, He's not, not, not the, the actress that Clooney is? Well, <laughs> we know. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a celebrity right there that... Yeah. Uh, people either love her or hate her, but yeah. you know yeah. she does have businesses to run, and um, she, much like when is, is assuming that Clooney, you know she can just give away money like it's nothing and all of that, but you know she has all these companies that she has to run too, and in order to get that money that she can just flutter away to people. <laughs> She got to run these companies and be successful. So, I, I, I mean, as much as I'm not a big fan of a lot of actors and actresses and their, <clears throat> yes, whiny ways, yeah, I do have to respect in a lot of ways. Like I said earlier, they're they're a brand and they do have to take care of themselves and they run their own business. And when, like Jim said, talking out of his ass, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about Oprah. I, I, I'm, the verdict's out on Oprah for me. I, I did like her when she started her uh, young rape school for girls in Africa. Uh, you may remember that. Uh, it turned into the young rape school for, for uh, African girls. Uh, I'm sure Oprah had every good intention, but it sounds like her good intentions were, I'll get this thing started and then I won't pay attention to it. Well, that, I, but you know what? That happens, I think, again. with with celebrity. I mean, I, I can't think of any cases in particular aside from that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that's happened to other people, too, where they've opened a school, where they've opened a charity. Um, I mean, I can think of uh, there's a uh, Green Bay Packer who had a charity, and um, it, it ended up they weren't paying their taxes. And, you know, I mean, he was losing sight of it on his own because he wasn't a direct, he wasn't directly involved. Right. So they lose sight of stuff. And I think celebrities tend to do that. And, and with Oprah, it very well could have been there where she thought, you know, I'll open it. People will run it appropriately and I don't have to worry about it. Hmm. And I'm not defending her, but I'm just saying that. You know, that, that's why, like, Wynn and other companies, that's why you hire people. That's why you have vice presidents to do things. And if they fail, ultimately it's still your fault because those are the people you hired, but you hired them to do a job. And with Oprah, she hired people to make sure that this thing worked, and it didn't. They failed. Uh, Bob Eberth. Yeah. <clears throat> It seems to me, the like this Phil Meyer down in the corner here, he has a small company, and he can be a little bit more intimately involved with his employees, and he can care for them. But that billionaire, people on the bottom of the food chain are like ants to him. Right. Well, I mean, to a guy like Steve Wynn, I mean, does he really care about the blackjack dealer? You know, does he, he have any kind of a personal relationship with him? Although, Jim, do you, you remember Vegas, right? Yeah. You remember the, uh, uh, what was the big hotel he owns there? The big, uh, huge, beautiful Wynn, one. Isn't it called Wynn? Well, uh, the, the Wynn wasn't there. It was yeah. the Bellagio. The Bellagio. Bellagio. Yeah. yeah. The Wynn wasn't there when we were hitting the convention circuit. I'll tell you where I feel that, that he was a humanitarian. That was the cheapest and best buffet in Vegas. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Back when I ate food. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, that was incredible. Yeah. Uh, I, to this day, I tell people uh, the best buffet I've ever had in Vegas was at the Bellagio. I think it was 
14 bucks or something. And four, was... 14 bucks. And I mean, yeah. it, everything. I mean, yeah. and, and good. Not yeah. just, you know, some of these places you go to, it looked like you were stopping at a truck stop. You know, the <laughs> truck stop food where yeah. you just kind of, if you walk by the buffet, you get a heart attack just looking at the food. And people, people in line to get food with their, they're balancing their trays on their walkers and they got a, uh, a, like the the bingo cup full of change at the same time, and <laughs> I mean, and I'm sorry, but it's just there are some freaky sights, man. People dragging oxygen at the same time, and well, you see, Jim, Jim, and I did uh, trade shows at oh, yeah. uh, at uh, in uh, um, uh, Vegas. NAB, uh, right? W- huh? NAB. Uh, 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 no, it wasn't yep. NAB. Was it NAB? Were we doing NAB? NAB uh, in... Uh, yeah, it was NAB. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was one. We went to a couple of those. We went to streaming uh, media conventions. Uh, we went to uh, NATP. Yeah. Uh, oh, NATP yeah. was the great convention. I enjoyed yeah. that more than anything else because you got to see all the washed-up television stars. That's right. Because they were all there promoting stuff, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and I was I was taken aback by these uh, these guys, these people who were the kind of has beens, kind of has beens. They were has beens, right? But they, they in those days you would get yourself a syndicated TV show if you were a has been because they could somehow promote you as having been a once was. <laughs> and um, uh, all all I all the only thing I came away from that convention with was. That there must be something that in show business that at a certain age you go to this place that encases your face in varnish, <laughs> and it it just you know it just keeps its shape, right? But it doesn't move. It just it looks it looks like it's been varnished, and that all these former stars all look varnished to me. Did you did you feel that way? Yeah, I remember the uh, one of the one of the big shows they were promoting, and you can, you, you as soon as I mention the name, you'll say, "Wow, that lasted Nat, for Nat, years." Nat P, by the way, was the convention that you would go to where they were all selling television, syndicated television shows. Okay, I think it's National Association of Television Production Executives or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, no, the, the big show they were pushing. I remember. I think Tribune was doing it, or or something like that. And <laughs> it was the Chris Darden show. And and wow. Chris and Darden. Had, wow. What? Where do I know that name? He was from, the uh, was the attorney. Defense, it's the the oh, prosecutor. Oh from right. The OJ right. trial. Right. Oh. And right. they had him out there, and it was going to be the Chris Darden show, and. You know, he's, he's in a big line and everybody's, you know, going to shake his hand and everything. And they're talking about how great the show was. Well, I never, I never heard of it again. After I, don't, the convention. I don't think it ever got off the ground. I don't he died, ever. didn't he? But also, you he know, you know. Died? Died? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he died. Darden? Chris Darden? Yeah. Really? Hmm. I think he died, yeah, didn't he? Let me Google it. Yeah, okay, Google, Google it. Google. Take, 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 see if you can find it. Um, I mean, the. Big guys like Tribune and uh, the King Brothers. Oh, the were, King Brothers who, were well. The King Brothers were the biggest distributors in television. Yeah, well, they but were like the, Oprah because, and but, Martha uh, Stewart, and, and they were taken over by uh, who's it, Paramount or somebody like that. What it, they were? They were Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy. Uh, they had a whole bunch of shows. Was, uh, they were they were they they were the big kids on the block. Yeah, and we were we were like right between the uh, the. I and mean, these booths, I mean, I'm sure they cost more than my house, each of these booths it's that these were set booths, up. Some of these booths that were set up like Paramount, I remember, yeah. had a, had one that was particularly amazing with marble floors on it and everything. I mean, these weren't booths. They were building houses in the middle of a of an auditorium. And yeah, we were we were next to Paramount, and, and just there was some other big syndicator. And then here was little Play TV and these, these guys kind of on the Internet and... It was amazing. People just like, wow, this is going to be something. This is going to be really big. And we got a lot of attention. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish it were that way now. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't think today we would have gotten that kind of attention. Everybody's Why? so, f- because everybody's so frightened of their own shadows. They don't want to try anything new. They're afraid of trying something new. Trying something new means you're going to get fired yeah. if it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And and really, where are the new ideas going to come from? 
You know, do we? Uh, uh, and my question is, could even uh, somebody like an Apple come into existence today? I mean, it it it's not as easy as it used to be. Uh, it, it's people aren't looking for the next big idea. They're looking for the next big thing that they can imitate. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And that's all I got to say. Uh, but Phil? Chris Darden is not Chris dead. Chris Darden's not dead. He's not dead. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I was wrong on that. Shall we play Dead, Not Dead? That'd be a good oh, game course. to play. Here okay. we got, we got oh. about a, a 35 minutes left, and I could kill it with Dead, Not Dead. How about uh, Mickey Rooney's dead, isn't he? Yeah. Dead. Okay. Oh, I know. What? For, how about Ephraim Zimbalist Jr.? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Do you know who Ephraim Zimbalist Sr. was? The father of Ephraim Jimbalist Jr. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. <laughs> uh, Ephraim, Ephraim Zimbalist Sr. was a concert, world-class concert violinist. Yep. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. I, learned... I bring it up because Jr. just died tonight at 95. Oh, wow. Ephraim wow. Zimbalist Jr. lived to be 95? Yep. Huh. Oldest FBI agent on record. Yeah. What do you mean the oldest FBI well, agent? He was record? in the show, the FBI. Oh, yeah, but he's not an FBI agent. No, 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 no. But no, he was 95. He died tonight. Wow. Was that a Desi Lu production? What, his oh, death? His death? <laughs> <laughs> FBI was Quinn Martin. Oh, yeah. okay. Quinn Martin, that's right. But, what not the... only that, he was the voice of Alfred in the uh, Batman the Animated Series. Oh, really? Yep. yep. Oh, okay. Huh. And uh, he also did a lot of it, didn't he? Did he do something earlier on, like '77 Sunset Strip yep, or I something so. like that? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Ephraim Zimbal is dead. Wow. Oh wow. Well, maybe my Ephraim Zimbalist video collection will now <laughs> go up in price. <laughs> you know, it's amazing when you say uh, something like Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and you go. Well, I, you know, I, maybe he's dead, maybe he's alive, but maybe I don't care. <laughs> Is that being mean? No. Uh -huh. Every death diminishes us. Every death diminishes us? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, it's 95, so it's <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but uh, uh, now here, I like playing this little game with Jim, because Jim and I, in the old days, we, we traveled quite a few places together. They used to give away, you were talking about it, little tchotchkes. Uh, you know, you, 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 who was it was talking here about going to conventions yeah. and coming back with USB drives like crazy. Mm -hmm. What was the best giveaway, the most popular oh. best giveaway, and I still have it somewhere, <clears throat> that ever in the history of those shows? Uh, what, what's the, the years? The year was about 1997 to 2000, maybe, somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say it was a little rubber ball. Do you remember the little rubber ball? Yeah, that lit up. And when you bounced it, it lit it's up. The, I liked I liked. And I think mine is somewhere and still works after all these years. No, no. Do you remember the tornado in a bottle? No. Oh, it was it was a little it was a little like six inch tall cylinder, and you'd spin it, you you'd grab one end of it and you'd shake it, and then all of a sudden the water would spin inside and look like a uh, it was a combination of water and oil, and it would look like a tornado oh, going yes, around. Oh yes, yes, I ha I got one of those some uh, from one of those yeah. conventions. Yeah, and you would like shake it, land? and it would just it would. Yeah, it, it was clear. It was no, a lot, but, not like a lava lamp. It was no, like, it, but you would you because if you didn't do anything to it, it just sat there and looked like a container full of water. But if you but if, if you, you spun, spun it around, it would all yeah. the stuff in it would start whirling like crazy. Yeah, <laughs> stupid, but okay. But the but people were lined up for these balls, and when oh, they yeah, got yeah. when they got rid of the balls, they said, "When are you going to get more in?" And they said, "Tomorrow at seven o'clock in the morning or something." And there was a lineup. Yeah, just to get you'd have these bags and you'd have all this crap in it. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. you would have to, you know, you only pack half your half your luggage cuz you'd come <laughs> back with oh yeah, you came back with brochures and you came back with tchotchkes and coffee mugs and crap like I'd, that. I'd like to tell shirts. I'd, I'd like to tell, tell quickly my worst convention story. Uh it was one of the, the trips to Las Vegas. Uh 
it was it, it was a short notice thing for me and some of the other people so we couldn't get a really great hotel and they stuck us in the the soon to be bank Corrupt Debbie Reynolds Celebrity Hotel. Oh, oh, I, oh, I stayed there once. Yeah. Yeah. Could, uh, okay. Now, and all the costumes and everything had already been cleared out. Oh, really? All the memorabilia was gone, and it was like all the posters and stuff were done. I mean, this was like the last couple of weeks, and so I, I took to calling it. And there were still pictures of Gable and Myrna Loy and things like that. So I, I took to calling it the. We were staying at the Dead Celebrity Hotel. <laughs> I, the air conditioning didn't work. So what we would do is uh, at night we'd leave the patio doors open and we'd go down to the ice machine and get buckets of ice and just toss them all over the carpet of the, of the hotel. And it would cool the room down. And by the morning you'd wake up and the carpet would be bone dry. Wow. Because I, of the, uh, just because let me of the tell you, Vegas I, temperature. I used to have this friend. Every year we used to go uh, in January. What was the convention in January is what I'm trying to remember. Uh, they don't have it anymore. I think, no, maybe it's CES. Yeah, it was CES. <laughs> yeah. And we would go to the yeah, CES so. show. Right. And my friend's desire was always to find the worst. I'll get to you in a second, uh, Patrick. You don't have to lose all feeling to your hand. I can... <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, I'll I'll get to you in a, in a second here after I tell another one of my pithy stories that everybody loves to hear. Um, he would always pick the worst hotel he could find for us to stay in, uh, and and believe me, he could find them. All right, but one year he decided the place we had to stay was the Debbie Reynolds Hotel. <laughs> And I've got to say, he booked us into a lot of really crappy hotels, but nothing beat the Debbie Reynolds Hotel. I mean, it was the worst. And this is while she was still there. And this is while she was still doing a show in the showroom. And this is while she still had all her costumes lining the hallways. And it was still the crappiest hotel in Las Vegas. Is it on the Strip? Uh, no, it was on a side street just up from the uh, the Hilton, where the convention center is, kind of. And that it was down one of the side streets. You can see it in the movie Con Air. They do. A, there's a big crash scene uh, in Con Air where there's a motorcycle and a, a fire truck, and you can see the Debbie Reynolds right there. But after it closed, I think it stayed closed for a little bit, then became for like a one year the WWF hotel and casino yes yes, yes. it did <laughs> yes it did but it was right the thing that made it good is it was right across the hall of the street from yep. the convention center yeah from the easy las vegas point. convention center so it was an easy place to stay but i can i can almost remember sleeping with my eyes open because i was so afraid <laughs> of this hotel the ghost of wallace beery coming to violate you in the night no debbie <laughs> reynolds coming to violate me in the middle of the night <laughs> By the way, <laughs> she's still alive, isn't she? Yeah. Okay. I just want, Debbie I, is alive. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel better about it. I, gee, if I if I, I can only outlast her, though, I just want to make sure I outlast Debbie Reynolds. Well, she's eighty three, I think. Huh? I think she's eighty three. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, and I can't remember that hotel was another hotel before it was that hotel, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, she took over what was a dying hotel and just put the nails in the coffin. That's all, you know. Uh, I often felt sorry for her, you know, that she had invested so much money in this essentially death trap. Uh, Patrick. Yeah, um, talking about conventions and Chotsky's and the worst conventions, um, every year when I worked for my company, I had to go to the conventions and promote you know, my work and, and that sort of stuff. And we had shot keys that we'd give out. And the problem was, and you guys may have run into this too, it wasn't so much the people that you were targeting that were coming to the table, yeah. but the spouses. Oh. And a lot of the spouses would come by the table because they had access to the convention. And they would take whatever shot keys we had and we knew they'd never make it to where we needed them to get. So every day, I mean, you'd open up at 7 a.m. 
by nine o'clock, you're out of all your shop keys. So one year we decided um, we'd take paper clips and just make paper clip sculptures and put them out on the table and see what would happen. People were grabbing them, and they were putting them in their bags and taking them. Oh, can I get two? My grandchildren will love these. And we're just grabbing paper clip. I, I mean, we had like a, you know, a box of them. We're just bending them and putting them out there. That's now what was it? Uh, the thing in the world. Jim. Well, I just wanted to say I, I did a quick look. Before Debbie had it, it was the Paddle Paddle Wheel Hotel and Casino. Mm-hmm. And now it still even exists and is up and running as the Clarion Hotel and Casino. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, you take the frame and then you just go in there and hopefully clean the thing up. But it was in a bit. <laughs> you would have thought that was a good place for a hotel to be because it was like a block from the convention center. But apparently not. I mean, she lost money like uh, like uh, crazy on that she deal. Stayed, remember the Rio? And the Rio had well, a window in the bathroom. Yeah, but the Rio, the, the, Rio, the Rio is now, you know, was the first hotel to be built off the strip. And everybody said it would fail, and it hasn't. It's done very well. My friends Penn and Teller have been there for like the last 15, 20 years doing their show. Yeah, They're the, the house show has this frosted window, in the, and it's like. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I committed, I even committed a, a slight felony in that hotel by by stealing a. A Danny Gans poster from the oh, elevator. I for remember you. that you, yeah. you stole it for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it wound up in my room, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody remember Danny Gans? He's dead. Is he really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, died today. It, how do we explain? No. <laughs> I wish he had died before we got to Vegas. Uh, Danny Gans <laughs> was what was he? An impressionist. Singer, comedian, impressionist. Singing, comedian, impressionist. You're looking at him right now, right? Yeah, I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Worst act ever in the history of show business. The guy would get up and he, what he did is he sang impressions. Yeah. All right? He would sing like, who? Elvis Presley or whatever. Muscle his hair a bit. But he was kind of like Rich Little. You know, Rich Little... Said he was an impressionist, but every time he did an impression, it sounded like Rich Little. <laughs> and Danny Gans was pretty much this way, but for some reason, they were throwing money at this guy because he all these yutzes who would come in from out of town had to go see the Danny Gans show. Uh, the, the other show they had to see, and I could never understand it, I finally got tickets one night to go see Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> and And I watched this show, and I went, why does anybody come to see this stupid thing? They want to see the tiger eat the guy. Well, he finally, so he finally did. did. He finally, finally did. did. People waited. It was like winning the lottery that <laughs> night for people. It was like winning Keno, right? Oh, my God, we finally saw the lion eat Roy. Uh, or was it... Siegfried. No, it was Roy. Roy. It it was Roy. But it, what would happen Same. is, to begin with, Siegfried didn't do anything. He would get out on that stage, and then he would stand there, and he would go, he would point. You know, he was like Vanna White, only gay. You know, he was like Vanna White, and he would he would like point at the tigers. Meanwhile, Roy's coming out riding these tigers, hugging these tigers, and you know, Siegfried doesn't want to get anywhere near any of these tigers, and yet he's being held up to the to the world along with Roy, as the people who tame these animals. But Siegfried didn't do pussy, no. No, he didn't do pussy on any <laughs> level. He didn't get eaten on, either. On any level. And it was maybe, I walked away, I said, that is one of the worst acts I've ever seen. I yeah. said, and I, I, I honestly, see, I believe that we were going to go see Siegfried and Roy, and of course I'm jaded, you know, and I, I have to play my holier-than-thou routine and being snobby and all of that. And then I go to see this thing, and I'm and I figure I'm going to go to it, and I'm going to walk out and go, you know, no matter what I thought of Siegfried and Roy, that's pretty terrific, right? Uh uh, I walked out saying that's the worst show I've ever seen. Why people, including me, pay eighty bucks a piece to come see these people is beyond me, you know. So that was uh, that was my Siegfried and Roy story. 
I enjoyed the pirate ship more than I enjoyed Siegfried and Roy. The pirate ship? Yeah, I mean, that was more enjoyable than spending the 80 bucks on, on, on Did Siegfried. Did you do the Star Wars thing when you were there? Yes. Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. The, no, I, did big, the, I did the Star Trek. That was incredible. And I did the Star Trek thing. That's, that's what I meant, the Star yeah, Trek. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. And they yeah. had the restaurant there at the time, too, and you could... You can combine at the Hilton there. You can combine the whole thing, and oh, yeah, it's quite enjoyable. That was mind blowing to be on the deck of the uh, yeah. right there, uh, you know, at the on the Enterprise. I, uh, it was the same story, the same deal, right? Where they they're going to try to get you off the ship, right? Yep. And, yep. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh. This was, this was, was, well, wait a minute. This wasn't a ride I went through. This was you kind of walked through it. <laughs> yeah. And then and then you get on a. Uh, Oh, the oh, whole yeah. floor shakes. Oh and they, yeah, 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 yeah. But then there was the restaurant that was all Star Trek themed, and you get your Ferengi fries and all your other stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and your Ge General Akbar. What? Uh, the, the General Akbar. What was the thing on uh, Big well, Bang? General Akbar snack bar. <laughs> <laughs> that, I can see that happening. Yeah. <laughs> No lobster, though. I'm wondering uh, how how, yeah. how Lucas feels about it's having sold Star Wars and has no control over. I mean, uh, Star, uh, Star Wars and has no control yeah. over it at he this can, point. He got he has more money now, and he's still getting more money from the deal. He's happy. <laughs> Is <laughs> he going to keep getting royalties off this deal? Oh well, yeah, that was a sweet yeah. deal. <laughs> well, I think he wrote the story. He, I mean, he. I mean, the, the the sketch work for the episode seven was come up with by Lucas, was it not? Well, I don't think now that's what he's getting. No, I oh, think okay. you're getting something that J.J. Abrams has come up with. Yeah. Um, by the way, I I did hear that, um, and I know this is a side. This is going back to what we we're talking about the Star Trek thing. Uh, that J.J. Abrams was not a fan of Star Trek, but he was a fan of Star Wars. So, you know, it, you were comparing how he did Star Trek. Well, you know, Star Wars. not being a fan of something doesn't necessarily disqualify you from doing it. That you, you, right. you, you remember how they came out with the first Star Trek movie and what a terrible, horrible picture that was? Oh, I was up close and personal to that one. How, how are you up close and personal with that one, um, Mark. Uh, I was I was somewhat involved with some of the Star Trek conventions back then, mm -hmm. and knowing people that worked on the movie, um, the fact that wait a minute, you're breaking up a little bit there. Breaking up. This, you're breaking up. Well, hold on a second. Sounds like a bad cell phone. It, 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 yeah, you, it's like you're breaking up all of a sudden. It's clipping. Yeah. Well, that's too bad, Mark, because yeah. it sounds like it'd be a good story. Talk to us a little more. Let's see if we can hear you. See? Uh, He's breaking break. up. Why don't you just hang up and call right back, okay? Call, uh, <laughs> By the way, yeah, I wanted everyone to know that Oscar has spoken, and he says that it is not Patrick that annoyed him. You were 100% uh. wrong. I just want to say it's me, motherfucker, Patrick. You know it's me. I win, motherfucker. Booyah. Oh. <laughs> I was sure it was Patrick. Really? Because Pat was 20 bucks. Oh, fuck, man. Oh, and I oh, was so busy defending Patrick. Up, oh, yeah. well, then now I'll have to defend Josh and say Josh is also one of my favorites. So he fuck didn't, all y'all. He didn't name me yet. He refuses to name the name. So oh, I just told him. I said, you got to name the name. Did have he you say, now or have you ever been a mother motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. Take, Take me away. <laughs> Let me see here. Here's Mark. Can we hear Mark again now, Mark? Hold on, the whole thing froze. Mark? Hang on, here he comes. Hey, man. Can we hear you, Mark? No, he's still having mm, trouble. Bad connection. Oh, boy. Hey, I just, <laughs> while we're waiting for Mark to come back. Yeah. There. What are you going to yeah. do? Other entertainment news. They've just signed a contract. They're going to make <laughs> uh, They're going to make a big screen version of Green Acres along with a Broadway show of Green Acres. Oh, wow. thank That's how God. fast the entertainment industry has gotten now. Why would now, they do that? Green Acres on Broadway. Green because Acres. they couldn't get the rights to Petticoat Junction, apparently. Because, exactly. no, because... Now, let me guess. Ava Gabor dead? Or Eva, Eva? <laughs> Gabor is dead, right? Ava Gabor is dead. So yes. Is so is so's, 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 uh, Eddie... Uh, uh, what's his name? Albert. Albert. He's yeah, dead. Who's gonna, who's gonna, how are we going to cast fact, this In fact, I don't movie? think there's anybody from that show that's still alive for crying out loud. I think the, I know the pig's dead. Mr. Yeah. Haney. 
Arnold's dead. No, what? Mr. Haney's dead. Pat Buttram's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Pat Buttram? Yeah. That'll cost you ten dollars, Mister Douglas. Yeah. No, I think the guy, the guy who played the farmhand, Eb, is still alive. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, is the Broadway thing going to be a musical? Green got, Acres? Oh, of course, or? it's got to be. Well, let's hope. Uh, you know, it's got to be. Yeah. So stage. Yeah, it, it says it's being as a stage play. So I would assume that it's going to be. I mean. I mean, how can they not make it a musical with that damn theme song that'll just get stuck in everybody's head? Right, right. Um, or maybe it'll be like a gritty reboot. It'll be all serious. Yeah. Well, like a Sam Shepard play. Mark, it, Mark is just uh, uh, buffering. Are you there, Mark? No, he's gone again. They should wow. remake Petticoat Junction like a Russ Meyer Well, film. they were the same producers. <laughs> yeah. The, the people who did uh, Petticoat Junction... Uh, did the Green Acres and did uh, the Beverly Hillbillies? Same, I think. Right. Same, same Probably people. Canceled at the same time because. But I'd like Russ Meyer to do it. Just want to get away from the country. Crap. The rural programming. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Let's see if Mark uh, can can connect now. Are you there? Can you can you hear us, Mark? No. Oh no. Hmm. Boy, Mark's got a real problem. Strange things afoot down in Florida's y internet. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Don't... I'm surprised I'm still on the air because we've had. We've had heavy lightning storms and massive rain right now. Wow. So by, I, I, by the way, uh, by the way, Jim, I, I was curious. Are, are you wearing a tie tonight for us for the TV show? Yeah, well, he, he doesn't have. The problem is he doesn't have his um, uh, his uh, too much light on in that room. Yeah. And so we can't he's see very, his. He's very well there dressed. We go. There we go. Uh, you're not getting a great signal out yourself. You're all pixelated tonight. Ooh. Well, that could be the weather. Yeah, that could very well be the weather. We used to always, oh. with Jim, in the old days of play TV, he, he was always a, the wild card as to whether we got his show on or not. <laughs> uh, and we would have to send his picture down. It was the smallest picture you've ever seen on a, on a, on a computer screen. Am I right? Yeah. Because yeah. we couldn't like, well, send a big one because that you, you didn't have the... The ability to do that. I think you had an ISDN line, didn't you, at the time? I had a cable modem. Uh, really? I had really? two cable modems. Uh, and I thought uh, I thought it would be better than that. Yeah. But, but uh, I wanted to say I'm kind of, I'm trying to rock the Rob Alfano, I got my mixer in the shot look. Ah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob always looks. You the same looks... mixer? Is that, is that the, um, the Behringer? Yes. Yeah. That's what I have. Uh, the eight, X1832? I got the X2222. Oh, okay. You're fancier. Oh. Mm. I, I, I've got uh, a, uh, a, my Erector. They make, uh, yeah, uh, my Erector mixer. Uh, <coughs> now here's my mixer here. I can show this now damn tonight because it's your TV her. time. Right. <laughs> there we go. There's my mixer. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Well, it's cheap. Uh, Rob, you guys are making some Rob, Rob's, Rob's got the best And that's my microphone. I've got a little Behringer. Are we going to show mixers? my mouth. <laughs> what? Am I uh, we're, everybody's sitting around bragging. You know, oh, uh, oh, what, what, oh, now we're going to try Mark again. Hello, Mark. Can you hear us, Mark? Okay, you got to hear me now. Wait, what was your problem? Uh, yeah. What was the problem, Mark? I'm not sure. Um, I, I just rebooted everything, so I'm like, okay, that was weird. Sorry yeah. about that. Well, no, it could just be, you know, the, the internet, it gets a little wonky or bad. We have a still on you, but, you know, let's not tempt the fates. At least we have you. You. So you. what were you saying? You were about to tell a story. There we go, Mark. Oh, oh no. I mean, um, we, we, I, I found out more about Star Trek The Motion Sickness yeah. than any, any one person should know about it yeah and, and ba basically uh roddenberry was given the keys of the kingdom of paramount at the time to make this epic movie it was the most expensive movie paramount had ever made it was yeah. at that time 45 million dollars which at that time was way in advance of anything else well the, the main problem was that they hired robert abel and associates that did some really good animation for TV commercials and special effects, yeah. but never had any experience doing motion picture work. Mm -hmm. 
And there, here, here was here, and here lies the problem. Yeah. They had, at first, I think a two-year lead time. Yeah. I think when it came to less than a year, mm -hmm. let's see what you got. They didn't even have one finished effect. So Paramount. Now this is where it rates <clears throat> the four point five. 45 million. Mm -hmm. uh, they went and got Doug Trumbull, John Dykstra, Robert Abel. They got all these heavyweights in the special effects business mm -hmm. and basically gave them blank paychecks and said, we have a uh, December 12th deadline. Get the film done. And then on top of that, Robert Weiss, who's a good director, yeah, had this editor that was given him wasn't really much of a Star Trek fan, I guess. And he edited together the most boring. I mean, it was like, oh, my God, a, a, a first semester film student could have done a better job. And that's what got delivered. Luckily, the film made money. Go figure. It didn't make back, I think it's $45 million, though, did it? It turned a profit, all said and done. And the odd thing, there was a DVD release that delivered the final version. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what you're talking about. It really wasn't completely a final version. Let me tell you why. Yeah. I love that version. I have that version. I coddle that version. You know, you you know why, don't you, Jim? Yeah. Because there are certain scenes in there they didn't complete the special effects on. Yeah. So you've got you've got uh, that thing where. Um, uh, Nimoy leaves the uh, the Enterprise, and you can see there, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can see the wires on him, and you can see <laughs> the soup the the ceiling of the sound stage. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah. Am I, mean, I right, it, Jim? You like, know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. but if the DVD release, they, I guess there was enough money there, then they went to as much of the original storyboards, and Robert Weiss was still alive. They finished the movie. They color timed you, it correctly. By the way, you know, I consider myself a pretty good interviewer. People have said I'm maybe one of the best interviewers around. Uh, uh, and, and, and I always consider myself a great interviewer. Do you want to know the biggest mistake I ever made in my <clears throat> life in an interview? Who didn't you get to interview? I interviewed Robert Wise. And I interviewed him and I talked to him a lot about Star Trek about Sound of Music, completely forgetting that he edited Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and I often said, if I could only get him back, if I could only get him back here, the you one had thing... that file. Mm -hmm. You had that file on Radio Free Jack for, for ages. Oh, of the yeah. interview with Robert Wise. It's still there, yeah. probably. Yeah, probably. Because I haven't changed Radio Free Jack in years. I don't think yeah. I've been over there in years. The, the, the Andromeda strain. I mean, that movie oh, yeah. still gives me nightmares. Really? I found it kind of boring. But the thing was about about Star Trek, uh, uh, the movie, they then came out with the second film, a point I was going to make. They came out with the second film, and I'm trying to remember who the director was. Can somebody look it up quickly? This was guy, Nicholas Meyer. Nicholas Meyer. He'd done a great Another film, Meyer. a great film uh, called the, uh, uh, it was a, a Sherlock Holmes film. 7% Solution. 7% Solution, one of my favorite films. Um, he, uh, he did that film, and they, they did, and they went to do Star Trek, and he said he had never seen Star Trek in his life. So he sat in a room for like 78 hours or whatever and watched every episode end to end. And I think they gave him like a $17 million budget. Yeah. And he <laughs> he came out of that room he going, I get it. I get what this is about. It's about people. It's not about technology. And he made a great movie, which, of course, was uh, um, uh, whatever that picture was. Wrath of, huh? The second Wrath one. Of Khan. Khan. Wrath of Khan. Which is great. It's maybe the best Star Trek picture yep. of them all. But do you yeah. know Star Trek pictures? never made money overseas for some reason it, they just never made money there hmm. so you know it's a uh, but it's uh, that, that was uh, quite a story about that that first star trek movie was just horrible they all looked like they were working in a uh, in a dental office <laughs> you know uh, the and the and the enterprise itself looked like a, like a dental office you they should have had like magazines there and things <laughs> like that 
I'm going to take this moment to say goodbye. Yeah, and because you have a show to do in a couple of minutes. A big show. Yep. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, are you still alive then? I'm still because alive. Because at the yeah. end of his show on, on Wednesday, he, he was dead. I, no, I was, I was, I was you, mortally you, wounded. You, you've been mortally wounded by Tuber Propagator. Yes. And the dog oh. was, was howling. Yeah. And then we heard a heart monitor, and then the heart stopped. Yep. So how are you coming back from that one tonight? It was all a dream. It was a flesh wound. <laughs> a mere flesh wound. <laughs> anyway, we're now doing this network like television. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jim. And we'll be listening for your program right after this. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Uh, let me uh, let me for for a moment tell all the people who've been watching the TV thing that this is a radio thing we do every night here, uh, and we do it from uh, not uh, ten until uh, midnight, and it's on. You go to gabroadcaster.com, gabroadcaster.com, and uh, you can hear it there. Or you can find out all the different ways you can hear it. I, I try to ask, I, I really want to know from people how they listen to this thing. I mean, how many people listen to this off a GA broadcaster? How many people listen to this as a, I, uh, as a podcast? And how many people listen to this on TuneIn.com? Uh, I imagine the, a lot of people listen to it on TuneIn. I, I just get that feeling. When you guys aren't on the air yourself how do you what do you do how do you listen to it bob i have to listen to it live i i live in mormonia <laughs> and you guys are just too adult for the people that would be around me at work oh so i see I okay to... yeah yeah especially uh, tonight well you can tell them that i'm one of god's chosen people you can yeah. do that you know uh, uh, josh how do you listen to it or do you just forget it all together when you're not on it uh, usually, because I've been when you move to nights, I use the internet now. But prior to that, I always yeah. But I mean, what do you do? What, what, how do you get it? By going to GA Broadcaster? Do you go yeah, to TuneIn? Yeah, that's in what or I meant. The, your web page, the GA Broadcaster. Um, that's how I sit and listen to it while you're before you open the lines, etc. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, when you're on during the day, I always use TuneIn because I could get that on my phone when I wasn't at home. Oh, okay, good. How about you, Rob? Mostly TuneIn.com, and uh, except when I'm going to join and I listen for the first half hour on yeah. GA Broadcaster. And uh, Mark, how do you listen to it? When I'm out and about, I'll listen to the TuneIn app, but when I'm home, I'm definitely going on the GA Broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Dan? <laughs> what do you do? Is, I'm I, trying to show you if it worked. Just the uh, I usually use the Android app. The app we and have sometimes an, I'll listen to it live. Sometimes I'll yeah. listen to an archive show, just depending. But on, we have if you have you, know, if you have an Android device, uh, we have. Yeah. Uh, in fact, well, I it'll have, come up uh, eventually. My phone is kind of slow and pokey. No, but, mine isn't here right now. But if you have an Android device, we have an app for it. How about you, Patrick? Off. Well, how do you listen to it when you're not on the air? How do you listen to it? When is he not on the Patrick? air? No. <laughs> Patrick. Patrick. Um, before, I mean, if I'm not uh, if I'm not on Albert's show, or if I'm waiting for you to come on, it's usually tune in. Uh -huh. Because uh, I'll put it on my phone, and then I can do stuff around my place, cleaning or or whatever else. Yeah. So, um, and if I'm actually at my desk working, uh, then I use the GA broadcaster. Oh, okay, and you, you feel know what, you feel? know what I find what? Uh, the difference between GA Broadcaster and the TuneIn app is when I'm listening to the show on GA Broadcaster. When you when you switch over between like Albert's show and your show, I have to do something to the browser. You have to you to have to refresh you. it. But, yeah. but TuneIn, I don't. Oh really? Yeah, you're right on that. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, well, tune in just uh, it just picks up and goes. Oh okay, Phil. How about you? How do you listen to the program? Uh, if it's live, I'll use TuneIn. Uh, if it's a Friday, I'll use uh, the live net or a uh, live stream. Live stream. Yeah. And uh, it downloads to my uh, iPhone as a podcast, and so I'll listen to it in the morning on the way to work. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted I did, I just wanted to take that little poll. Yeah. And uh, I asked you, didn't I, uh, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. 
because I sometimes forget when I go around the circle here, and also the pictures change. So if I take people in order, they get all out of order after a while. Uh, we did that on purpose. Well, anyway, uh, you know. Uh, oh, hey, uh, Miranda. Miranda. Oh, there she is. Wait a minute. A quick call from Miranda. Hey, Alex. Where are you, Miranda? Um, speeding along I-15 down through Utah. I just wanted to call and say hi, let you know we're listening on uh, the TuneIn app. Okay, great. You know, you called us just oh. at about the time we got to bring yeah. the show to a, a, a screeching halt yeah, here. Yeah, I know. Kind of did that on purpose. Yeah, you know, plus I'm driving right now, so I gotta go. Okay. I to say hi from Utah. Well, have right. good, have good travels, my friend. Yep. Bye bye. Right. Okay. Talk to you later. Anyway, that <laughs> she even got in wow. here to, for a little cameo. Hey, thanks to everybody: Josh, Patrick, uh, Phil, uh, Bob, uh, Dan, uh, Mark, Rob, me, uh, uh, everybody, uh, and uh, of, of course, also, was there anybody else we had here that had to go? Uh, uh, and Aaron, of course, Jim and uh, uh, Aaron, and uh, that's about it. Hey, I got to go. Thank you so much. We'll see you again on Monday. Great fun. And uh, uh, we'll weekend. see you this good weekend, weekend. Uh, uh, Rob, on the, uh, uh, we forgot to thank Rob on the, on the great, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The Gabnet Rewind programs. I got to go. I'm running late. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. And that's it. I'll see you again on Monday. In the meantime, as always, if you see her. Tell her I love her, will you? Hit the bow. Wait a minute. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll <laughs> see you on Monday. Here it is. There we go. Bye.